Please stand by. We now take you live to the Institute of Rational Thought for a special broadcast. Hard-hitting interviews and relevant information to make your day. It's Chad Adams. And good day to you all. One day closer to the election next week. This time, we'll have a lot resolved, and we'll have many more questions yet to answer. But uh, with us today, we're very pleased to have... Um, a very special guest, Bishop Patrick Wooden, also goes by Pastor Wooden. He is uh, Chief Executive Officer of the Upper Room Church of God of Christ in Raleigh, North Carolina. 3,000 members strong. Uh, he is an African-American minister. I'll just throw that out there because radio doesn't pick that up, but our Facebook audience would. But here's the reason. You'll say, why are you having a minister on your political show? Well, I'm going to give you some background. And good morning and good day to you. Good morning. I'm honored to be here. It, well, you. it's an honor to have you here. Thank you, sir. Now, I'm, I'm having you on the show because uh, Benjamin Barber is a, is a Democrat donor to Deborah Ross. Right. Uh, he was at an event in, in August, I think the latter part of August, in New York City, where he made some scandalous comments about uh, African Americans or blacks. He says blacks. Uh, blacks who are helping the other side are seriously, uh, a, a word I won't use on the air, messed up in the head. They're only helping the enemy who will destroy them. Maybe they think if I help them, we'll get along okay. Somehow I'll save my race by working with murderers. Right. He referred to black menis- blacks that are supporting Republicans as helping murderers. Right. Uh, Deborah Ross accepted the money. She has since given that $200 or so back and given it to Habitat for Humanity or, or a Hurricane Relief, I believe. So you were shown this video. It was a secret video by the Veritas Foundation. Yeah. Tell me how this came about that you ended up seeing this video. We were contacted by the Veritas Foundation, and they, they were quite honest. They said, we have a video. Uh, we have footage that we would like for you to see, and we, we will not tell you that what it's all about beforehand. And if you could assemble some people and get we want their raw reaction whatever it is pro con or whatever were you suspicious of this well like, oh, what? I, well I, i'm familiar with the veritas uh organization. james o'keefe yes. who has has done mm-hmm. these videos mm-hmm. about planned parenthood yes. and other groups. yes so uh i thought it would be a wonderful opportunity to do just that and if it's something that um that would uh would help or that would enlighten then we wanted to be a part of it, and uh, I called some pastors and some of the people on the video are members of the church and, and, and told them, now, this will be recorded, this will be released, and we want your raw opinion. And each person was brought in individually. And oh, separate. really? Oh, yes. So it wasn't a group. It was, no. So there wasn't any group thing going no. on. It was each no. individual no. seeing this video for the first each time. Each individual seeing it for the first time, including Ooh. me, for the wow. first time. And then we... Uh, uh, the rest were seated in uh, a room at the church. Uh, the, the video was shown in the in the sanctuary. So you're in there by yourself. You give your all of the responses were um, unedited, unscripted, raw responses, and and none of us knew what the other said. So you, you're seeing this Democrat fundraiser say these rather incendiary things about right. anybody that happens to be black and supporting Republicans and how horrible they are. Right. What was your reaction to this? Well, I was appalled and it was confirming. Uh, I I know that there are people who actually believe, and this is only applied to African Americans, that if you vote for anyone other than a Democrat, your loyalty or your black card is questioned. Now, an Asian can vote for, can be Republican or Democrat, that members of that Latino community can do the same. Whites do the same. Everyone does it. But when it comes to African Americans, you're somehow less African American if you don't vote Democrat. And I think that it 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 it, it lends to why we are politically extremely weak as a voting block. Anytime you vote approximately ninety percent one way approximately 90 to 95 percent of the time you have no political power see and then but the the community that you speak of would say just the opposite when william barber gets out there he clearly has a slant everyone should vote their way right and that doesn't seem to be a debate about what the issues or what the actual solutions are it seems to be one solution always the same and that's to the left and 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 again that that's the problem and and always to the left but these are people my great people who live, for the most part, to the right. When you vote the way we've been voting, 
The Democrat Party takes our vote for granted. Yes. That's why nothing gets done. The Republican Party, at the end of the day, these are politicians who want to get elected. Mm-hmm. They know that regardless to how they reach, at least up until now, the, the, the African Americans for the last 20, 30 years or so, you know, the last four, five, six, seven, eight voting cycles have not voted uh, uh, in large numbers for the Republican candidate. The great loser is the African-American community. I liken it quickly to a marriage metaphor. Most people who are decent people, when they see a person with a wedding band on, they know that person is married. So even if they're attracted to you, you move on. And if you're married yourself, then you're not looking for a mate. But but if there's no wedding band, that says you're open, that, that, that at least there can be some conversation there. Well, I want the African-American community to take the wedding band off and just throw it I mean, metaphorically, metaphorically the wedding band to the, the, to the Democrat Party, yeah. which would announce to both parties. What do you think would happen if 20 to 30 percent of African-Americans defected from the Democrat Party and became either independents or Republicans? It would send a massive signal to both parties yes. that, hey, these people are on the block. Th- right. These are votes that are up for grabs. The big winner is the African-American community. But as we are now, we're the losers. And when you look at every uh, a standard of measure, whether it's education, jobs, housing, whatnot, we fare, we're at the bottom. Why do you think that is? I mean, I mean, uh, there are a lot of historical reasons why. But when you look at it now, it looks like in this day and age when we're, you know, the after after President or Obama gets elected, two terms of an uh, African-American president, and yet we find that, that it would seem that that block of votes mm-hmm. would, would have, I agree with you, the NAACP would have far more power if it was open right. to uh, a, sort, a lot of different ideas. And it looks like it's only open to one set of ideas, which right. tend to be more socialist. And, and, and uh, I owe a great deal of, the, of my life and existence and um, success to the NAACP. Okay? I adore the NAACP of yesteryears, but today's NAACP is an extension to the progressive policies of the left, mm-hmm. to the Democrat Party, and it is a it is a party that, that has, it is an organization that in many ways lack relevance. Uh, the NAACP now champion the cause of the LGBTQ community. Yes. Now what does that have to do with colored people? <laughs> Do you see I, what I'm saying? I do. I don't. I, I'm with you. I don't understand this. I've discussed this on the show. Right. At least we can have discussions now about this. You know, ten years ago, if I would have had this discussion, uh, accusations of racism and everything else would right. have been thrown at me. Right. Uh, oh, there's a conservative talk show. They're right. just a bunch of racists, and we're we're fighting that each and every day too. And I think there's a lot of issues that need to be discussed. Healthcare is one mm-hmm. of them. You know, jobs, as you said, right. economic education, I mean, even on school choice. I mean, the African American community benefits from school choice, but the NAACP will tell them, no, we've got to stop charter schools, it, and it actually works against them. It, it, it's amazing. Uh, school choice is an issue that was near and dear to my heart. As you you may or may not know, we uh, had a Christian school uh, for 18 to 20 years here in Raleigh, the Upper Room Christian Academy. Our producer was talking about that. Yes, Yes, a very viable school. Yes, very viable school. Uh, We've since sold it. It it, it did well for 18 to 20 years, but with the cap taken off of the charter schools, it's difficult to compete with free. Right. But let me tell you, we saw remarkable things and one of the strangest things is we had liberals and conservatives who would visit the school and Tea Party people who would walk through the school and see all of those African-American students learning. And you know what? They would be moved to tears and would even write a check to help the school wow. continue. Ninety nine percent of the liberals who would walk through those same halls would look at the school, tap me on the shoulder and say, good job. But we, 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 we believe in the, wow. the public school system, a, a system that is failing African-American yeah. males. Uh, the dropout rate is what? Somewhere around 50%? Yes. And I'm a big proponent for the money being allocated to the student and not to the district. Because when that money, when the money is allocated to the student, it gives the teacher an extra incentive to yeah. teach and to, to get through to this, this to the child. We need to take a break. All right. We're going to continue our discussion with the Reverend here. Uh, and, and we were talking about the Benjamin Barber stuff that was yes, caught on tape yes. by Veritas. We will continue with uh, Patrick Wooden, the bishop uh, joining us this morning. Conservative 
black yes. minister. We're going to talk more. Lots to talk about. Stay Proud here. of it. <laughs> Did you know volunteering can be fun? Community service is for everyone. Young people, families, men, women. As a volunteer, you'll help your community and gain valuable skills. Network with others. Energize your life. Make an impact and have fun. Get in step with your community. Volunteer. Visit www.lionsclubs.org. I'm Jennifer Wood, and I'm the Features Editor with the North State Journal. I'd like to tell you a little bit about how we cover the state in the North State of Mine. From Avon to Asheville, Franklin to Frisco, Moorhead City to Maggie Valley, Holly Ridge to Hot Springs, Boone to Bath, and back again, we cover the whole state. And I am Donna King. I'm the News Editor for the North State Journal. We are proud to be North Carolina's only statewide newspaper, elevating the conversation with all the news, sports, and features delivered right to you at nsjonline.com. That's nsjonline.com. Have you seen our latest poll data? Was this the one by Cardinal Point Analytics? Their poll was extremely accurate and really helped us out. I just found out they do polling for political campaigns and private companies. Not just the market research they did for us. This is a lot of information. Cross tabs, demographic breakdowns, regional messaging, multiple questions, queries, and the list goes on and on. This had to cost a fortune and it must have taken a month. Not at all. It was less than half of what our previous company was charging us. They turned it around in less than a week, and there's a lot more information here. We've got some new products coming out next fall. Make sure you get Cardinal Point involved. We'll need a lot more information before then. For more information about Cardinal Point Analytics, please check out cpapolling.com. Although they were entirely outnumbered and out-equipped, they had one huge advantage. They had General George Washington. Leadership. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. I'm Nick Craig. This is Against the Norm. Liberalism running rampant on college campuses is nothing new in the United States. Led by ultra-leftist administrations and professors, today's liberals know nothing different. Their combination of intolerance and violence sweeps across campuses like wildfire, destroying anyone that doesn't agree with their madness. Stoking this fire is the inherent left-leaning media that showcases acts of liberals doing the right thing to suppress any opposing opinions that might interfere with the safe spaces their professors have worked so hard to create and maintain. When an opposing opinion does manage to escape the fire and an event is held, many times it is shut down by the universities for various non-explained reasons. If not shut down by the universities, liberals will swarm the event and shout down anyone that doesn't spew the left's propaganda. This intolerance does nothing more but solidify the feelings liberals have that they are on the right side of history. This also makes it very hard to be a Republican on college campuses today. But no matter how strong the fire, we all know who is on the right side of history. This is Against the Norm. I'm Nick Craig. The Daily Haymaker, North Carolina's leading political website, takes you behind closed doors in Raleigh, Washington, and even in your county to shine a light on the antics of the elected and unelected folks in government. Dailyhaymaker.com takes you deep past the web of lies woven by the drive-by media to give you the facts you need to know. No party line spin. At Dailyhaymaker.com, you're getting timely intelligence and insight from a veteran of politics and journalism. Dailyhaymaker.com is one of the first stops on the web each day for business and government leaders across North Carolina. Make it yours. A few words for a successful life. Always ask why. Why? Tell the truth all the time. Why? Write thank you notes. Eat right, sleep right, and exercise. If you don't like your job, change it. Why? Be creative every day. Take a fun trip. You don't always have to do things fast. These motivating thoughts from Randy Pausch's last lecture remind each of us to live our dreams. Can I go now? My dog wants to play. Oh yeah, play with your dog. And with your kids. Motivation. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. With us in studio, Bishop Patrick Wooden. He's the Chief Executive Officer of the Upper Room Church of God and of Christ in Raleigh, 3,000 members strong, a conservative black minister. Yes, they're out there. There's a lot more than the media would have you believe, but he was shown the Project Veritas video when a supporter of Deborah Ross's was saying, basically, if you are black and you support Republicans, you're the equivalent of Jews helping Nazis kill right, Jews. Right. And you saw that video. But let me ask you, you were talking about the allegiance that the black community has to a party. So the color of the skin determines the allegiance of a party. Nothing to do with issues, nothing to do with 
you know, anything. And you say the African-American community, the black community is losing power because of this. You've taken it on the chin. Your own community, the black community, has come after you on multiple occasions. You've been a conservative for a very long time. Yes, I, I was raised with conservative values, although they weren't called conservative values. I only figured it out as I got grown and began to think independently for myself to work hard. I was raised to love this country. I wasn't raised to hate people who are not my color. I was raised to believe, because I met good people, Mm -hmm. both white and black. I met bad people, both white and black. So if I'm going to believe that everyone whose color is not like mine uh, is, is are bad, then I'm going against the facts. Because how do I explain this nice white guy who stopped me and took time with me and helped me along the way? How do I explain the nice black people, my people who have done the same, and then those who were very mean? So this is a great country. It's the finest place to live in, in the world. There's a reason why people cross deserts uh stow away on tanker ships that do all kinds of things to get in america now why is it that other groups can get here by hook or by crook and begin to prosper and move up and yet there is this group of people who historically built this country uh, through slave labor, who has made tremendous contributions to the country, and yet now you see our progress moving backwards. I believe... Talking about the black community. The black community. I believe what has happened to us is the invasion of liberalism, uh, the the, the move to progressivism, a over-reliance upon government, and what what you witnessed on the Deborah Ross video. To me, there are no races. Like, races... White liberals, because they wow. believe that blacks are stupid and that we cannot fend for ourselves and that we need them to help us. So therefore, if we vote, if we do not toe their party line, we are somehow working against ourselves and our own best interests. When I would make the argument, just in the, in the, I would make the opposite argument of the two major parties. There's only one party that has in its platform a full-throated support for the one organization that has been the greatest killing machine of African Americans throughout American history, and that organization is Planned Parenthood. 1,876 black babies are aborted in this country per day. From wow. from eight percent of the population, four thousand abortions uh, per day in uh, in America uh, overall. Eight percent of the population uh, are, are responsible for almost half of the nation's abortions. We're the African American community, my wonderful community, are aborting more babies than we're giving birth to. And what do we get from uh, candidate Hillary Clinton? She's on the stump saying, if you elect me, I will get rid of the Hyde Amendment. She's basically saying to African Americans, you guys aren't killing yourselves fast enough. The Hyde Amendment says 76 have saved a roughly 2 million, 2.13 million lives. And she wants to get rid of that so that Medicare can pay for poor, i.e. black women to abort Um, their babies and when she makes these statements we cheer yay 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 i'm with her well i'm not with her because i believe we should we have a right to be born whether you're poor or not the first civil right the original civil right is the right to be born well, she literally said rights do not begin until birth. And she literally said that if yes. it's in the womb, it's not a citizen. It's not a person. And, 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 and at I, any point, at yeah. any point, it's just not. Uh, but I guarantee you this. Kelsey, Chelsea's babies were persons. The moment she came and told her mom and dad that she con- conceived, mm-hmm. they got happy. I guarantee you they didn't see it as a Martian. They didn't think that what was in her was an animal. They didn't think that it was some strange being. It was her grandbaby. And you know what? They encourage all the prenatal care, do everything that you're supposed to do. They begin to plan for the arrival of that beautiful child, and they were excited. Well, I think that the mother on welfare, the poor sister, that her baby is just as special. You know why, Chad? That baby was me, and many people like me. And 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 look, think of all of the potential that we are losing, that we're cutting off before the child even gets a chance to be born. Dr. King said that abortion is like slavery because someone else determines the destiny of the child. 
So how can we vote in tandem in huge numbers for people who without apology says, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to support, and even President Obama, I'm going to support the one organization that is slaughtering people who look like me. President Obama, throughout his eight years, gave historic uh, amounts of taxpayer money to Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood as an organization didn't need the money. You know, they could survive without the government infusion. And they try to say, but they do more than just abortion. Yeah, well, you know, rat poison is only a few percentage points poison. But but according to their own according to their own uh, uh, accounting records, what skyrocketed from the government infusion of money have been their lucrative abortion industry. I go down to the clinics myself. Wow. And I see what is happening. And while down there, as I see African-American couples, ladies and different people going in to abort their young, among the things I say to get their attention, to hope to get them to change their minds, and many do, I say to them, black lives matter. <laughs> you've got to, I mean, the things you're saying within your community, you've got to make you somewhat of a pariah. You've, you've to, got to, to be, to they've, some, got to, they've got to, the Alinsky side of the... Yes. They've got to try to shut people like you up. Oh, you're a yeah. threat. You're a, you're an existential threat to the the black culture of of yeah. being controlled by government, being enslaved by government programs. Yeah. Well, you know, my my, my degree is illegitimate. I I'm stupid. I'm backwards. I'm a inward who don't know his place. I mean, listen, your you, your skin have to has to be thick. And one of the things that motivate me, of course, as a minister, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I'm a proud African-American. I am. Listen, I won life's lottery just being born here. And I want other African-Americans to know this, even with the protests we see uh, uh, of the flag and, and down to uh, high school guys and junior high school guys saying, Coach, do we have to stand? Well, why? Why make the young African-American male even angrier? So if he doesn't support the flag everywhere he looks, if he's angry with his nation, then everywhere he looks, he's angry. If he looks to the right, what he sees angers him, to the left, so forth and so on. Well, go on and buy him an orange jumpsuit because he's on his way to jail or to prison because we're making them monsters versus showing them the august opportunities that still exist in this country. Well, let's do this. Amy, can we... Keep the bishop for one more second. I don't think I think we're clear in the next segment. So I'd like to keep uh, Bishop Wood, and I think his message is is interesting. It's resonating, especially and for our terrestrial listeners down between Charlotte and Greensboro. We appreciate you listening as well, and I know it resonate with them. I want to get to this the this this how do you break this mold? The African community, I think, has a lot of power that it's not using, right? And I think the more it opens up, the more power it'll have. We'll continue our discussion with Bishop Wood, and after this, stay tuned. Thank you. I'm Neil Robbins, publisher of the North State Journal, North Carolina's only statewide newspaper. As a lifetime North Carolinian, I am proud to say that the North State Journal covers North Carolina news, sports, features, and politics from Murphy to Manio. We're happy to bring you the news of our great state, and you can find out more information at nsjonline.com, where you can subscribe both to our print edition and our electronic edition. Image is critical. What people think of your company, your campaign, your ideas matter. Red Wolf Public Sector understands those issues. With decades of experience in marketing, communications, image building, and branding, Red Wolf Public Sector shares your concerns. We help you build your brand and shape your image. Contact Red Wolf Public Sector today at 919-400-8250. And we're proud to be a sponsor of the Chad Adams Show. Brooke Ellison is a surprising person. When I was 11 years old, I was hit by a car, and no one expected me to live. She surprised people by living. I've been paralyzed from the neck down and on a ventilator since that time. And she surprised them by going to college. Tomorrow, I will graduate from Harvard. Brooke Ellison, Determination. Pass it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. You've seen the paintings, the Thanksgiving turkey being served at grandma's. 
The weathered farmer sending his baby-faced son off to college. Now be sure and write. The wise police officer sitting at the soda bar, talking a young boy out of running away from home. Where are you going? Norman Rockwell didn't create the best in us. He just inspired the best. Inspiration. Pass it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Ollie Barrett. The Islamic State has released a tape it says is from its leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. If confirmed, it would be the first public message from him in around a year. There have been long-running rumors that he's dead. The voice on the tape says that Iraqis should defend the city of Mosul against advances by the Iraqi army. The actual whereabouts of Baghdadi remain unknown. Some officials have suggested that he could be inside the city of Mosul alongside Islamic State militants. U.S. President Barack Obama has urged Democrats of all ethnic backgrounds to get out and vote for Hillary Clinton next week. He says the fate of the U.S. Republic and the world is at stake. He's been speaking at a rally in North Carolina and repeated his claim that Donald Trump is not fit for office. This guy is temperamentally unfit to be commander-in-chief and he is not equipped to be president. And this, this, this is not a, this should not be a controversial claim. It really shouldn't. I mean, it's strange how over time what is crazy gets normalized. If you don't know where to go, then go to IWillVote.com. IWillVote.com. You can find the one-stop location near you. And we can finish what we started eight years ago. Americans vote on Tuesday. Donald Trump says Hillary Clinton has become unhinged in recent days. Russia's prime minister is repeating President Vladimir Putin's claim it's impossible to interfere with the U.S. presidential election. But American intelligence continues to blame Russia for masterminding cyber attacks against the U.S. Democratic Party. Kevin Ozebek reports from Moscow. Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev says the United States has powerful political machinery and there's no way another country could impact election results there. The Prime Minister made the comments while speaking to Israel's Channel 2 ahead of his trip to Tel Aviv next week. Mr. Medvedev also says there's a double standard with the U.S. since it meddles in other countries' affairs. While Russian officials continue to deny supplying hacked emails to WikiLeaks, the U.S. intelligence community says Russia is behind the hacking of email accounts belonging to members of the Democratic Party. The New York Times reports FBI agents believe the hacking isn't to tip the election in Donald Trump's favor, but rather to undermine the election process in America. Kevin Ozebek, Moscow. Staying in Moscow, and the director of the city's Library of Ukrainian Literature has gone on trial, charged with inciting ethnic hatred against Russians. Natalia Sharina stands accused of disseminating banned literature, which is classed as extremist. In court, she's denied the charges. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. The Chicago Cubs are finally off the list of major American professional sports teams with the longest championship drought. They've won the World Series, something they last did 108 years ago. Rachel Sildman reports. The Chicago Cubs beat the Cleveland Indians 8-7 to in a World Series Game 7 for the ages. The Cubs carried a 6-3 lead into the eighth inning, six outs away from a cathartic victory. But a double and a two-run home run by the Indians wiped out that lead and tied the game. Rain delayed the game by 17 minutes as it went into extra innings. But once the rain let up, the Cubs poured it on, scoring two runs to provide the cushion they needed. The Cubs last won a World Series championship in 19. 19- 08. Rachel Silverman, San Francisco. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has accused the Syrian government of committing serious crimes against humanity. Hundreds of thousands of people have died in the five-year-old conflict in the country from Berlin, Iris Spitzer. Germany's chancellor criticized Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's government while accepting the sole peace prize, noting the use of barrel bombs, incendiary bombs, and chemical weapons in the Syrian civil war. She also mentioned the use of starvation as a weapon, as well as attacks on hospitals. Germany has also criticized Syria's main military ally, Russia, whose entry into the war drastically changed the balance of power on the ground. The Syrian government is currently battling rebel forces for control of Aleppo, Syria's largest city. 
Returning to the U.S. campaign trail and 25 million American voters have already made up their minds and cast their ballots. These voters made their choices in Maryland. I'm a nervous wreck. I want this to be over and I want her to win. <laughs> we don't care what we say. We vote for him because he's the only man for now. We don't have nobody else. He's the last hope for us, for people work, for the hardworking people. That's the latest feature story news. Ollie Barrett reporting. Continuing, here are Journey into Broadcast Excellence, the Chad Adams Show, chadadamshow.com, with Bishop Woodson. Wooden, I'm sorry, said that wrong. He is the CEO over at the Upper Room Church of God in, uh, in Christ in Raleigh and 3,000 members strong, someone who's taken a, conser- a black minister with a conservative framework that's taken hits from blacks, from Democrats, and saw the video where basically a Democrat donor said that any blacks that support Republicans are the equivalent of Jews supporting Nazis. <laughs> and you saw that video. I saw it, and I tell you, I, um, I felt rings of fire swelling up in me but at the same time, as I said earlier, it confirmed what, what I believe. He's a liberal. And he actually, those were such condescending statements. He's basically calling blacks stupid. Yes. And, and the way Deborah Ross responded, and it, you see the, the, the fire and the fervor in him, her mm-hmm. as she talked about these things. Now, she's a very different Deborah Ross when she gets back to Raleigh. Yes. And make her speeches. That was in New York City. That's in New York City where the money is. Yeah. So that was the real Deborah. Mm -hmm. Deborah and many like her actually believe that African-Americans are silly people. I do not. I believe that we are a viable part of this nation. I believe that we we have no cognitive problems whatsoever. We are a great people. And I believe that we are worth fighting for. But we will not. We will not survive what is taking place if it continues. In 50 to 75 years, if current trends continue, someone may write a book saying, and there were black people living in America. People say to me, uh, uh, Bishop, that can't happen. I say it has. Look at what has happened to the American Indian. Mm-hmm. Look at, look at the, the numbers. And, and uh, from a biblical standpoint, the formula that God gave Israel to survive seven years of captivity in Babylon, one of the things he said in Jeremiah chapter 29, he says, multiply, that your numbers be not diminished. And our numbers are, are diminishing. And in, and in politics, the name of the game is numbers. And when people, when, when people don't think you're going to be around, when people see behavior, because Democrats and Republicans can count, why do you think? They're bringing in all of the immigration. And why do you think Hillary... They're building their base. Oh, yeah. They're building yeah. their base. And, and Hillary, the, the WikiLeaks, reveal that the blacks were called by her and her camp professional never-do-wells. She, she said the argument for immigration is so clear that the most dim-witted can see it, that there are people who will fare well if given half a chance. She says right. uh, the Chinese... Asians, Sikhs, for example. Mm -hmm. And then there are others who will not do well regardless, such as Muslims and blacks. She says, so the majority of people are between the perennial uh, achievers, overachievers, and the professional never do wells. And this was the WikiLeaks exposed that yes. the, the upper echelons yes. of the Democrat Party yes. absolutely take for granted yes. all of these disparate lower income socioeconomic. They see even the, the, the needy Hispanics. And we see this kind of the way they really the, these WikiLeaks expose this champagne socialism mm-hmm. from the elitist in the Democrat Party. Right. And, and, and the, the major networks ignore, ignore it. People like me, I, I feel that part of my calling is to tell the truth. I've never run for office. I'm not interested in that. But I am interested in the truth getting out. And once people know the truth, then you're on your own. You vote vote what is in your best self-interest and according to your core of beliefs. As a Christian, I cannot, and and I don't apologize for it, I cannot vote for those who are for the eradication of the innocent. 
I can't vote for those who disagree with the God of the Bible on issues such as marriage. I support the governor and HB2. I think it was good common sense legislation. I don't apologize for that. I'm married. I was with my 81-year-old mother yesterday. I, my, my wife, I'm married. I have a daughter. I have a granddaughter. And And let me tell you. Patrick wouldn't wouldn't do well with some guy who who self professed as a woman walking into the bathroom with my eighty one year old mother or my wife or my my daughter or my granddaughter. It wouldn't work, and 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 no one wants that. But Are you shocked that the black community is not with you on that? I mean, I, I, it was to me, I thought that that would be a natural fit. Well, what happened? Black was, community has conservative values. Yes, in church. Yes. Well, what happened was, you know, the the, the legislature you know they can't resist attaching something to oh I, the bill. I agree with you we've said that yeah. on the show many and times. so when they when they attach the uh, discrimination deal to it so what happened was they demagogued it yeah. and uh, uh, and they began to say well you know we are with the bathroom part but this other thing well they dropped it and and so but when you have powerful men like the, the reverend barber whom i respect i disagree with but i respect and when we see each other we're quite cordial but uh, when you got powerful even men, though like he's him, made fun of you and called you names oh yeah yeah okay but, and, and you know what it's fine it's it's, it's fine but I, I haven't seen you call you know him what? names or disrespect him no i'm not going to disrespect him because when you have the truth on your side you don't have to because here's what reverend barber and all of them know they know i'm right they know that you you can attack me, but you can't attack my dogma. You can't show where I've been factually or scripturally incorrect. So if you want to come after me and call me a Uncle Tom, let's say I'm a part of a Trojan horse, say whatever you want to say, say that. But no one ever says he's factually incorrect or he's misinterpreting the scripture. And at the end of the day, we're going to all have to stand before the God of the Bible. Barber will have to answer for his stance. He'll have to explain to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, why he marched in favor of abortion and marched in favor of same-sex marriage. And I'll, I'll have to explain to Jesus Christ why I agree with him on issues of abortion and same-sex marriage and why I believe I even agree with him on how to get out of poverty. The Bible tells us, Paul says, the key to having no lack is to work. Do your own business. He says, if a man doesn't work, neither shall he eat. There, there are no scriptures that, that, that support ever-growing government. Take it. There's no scriptures that support uh, the transferring of wealth where you take money out of one person's pocket and put it in another's just because. But what the Bible supports is working. And I, do we have problems in this country? We do. Mm -hmm. Does racism exist? It does. But it exists on both sides. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, that, that, that those of us who differ, I don't think that it makes me less of a black man to have a differing opinion. I tell you what, I tell people this, one of the differences between me and the president, my mom was black and my daddy was black. I'm all black. I'm all African-American. I've been black all my life. All I know is black. And there's, there hasn't been one anti-African-American, one anti-black position that I've ever taken. You can't what say that do you president. see this changing? I, because I, I, I agree with you that there has to be a change in the black community. Yes. The black communities being led down a path that is taking them away from power. It's taking them away from uh, unleashing their dreams, unleashing their potential, because it's selling them on a, on a culture of dependency, do you think? I mean, do, we, do you see that shifting? Because the more they move away from dependency, the more they move in empowerment, the more they move, have empowerment, free enterprise, capitalism, growth, opportunity. It's a whole new world when you it move is. that way. And, and Do you uh, see that happen? Oh, yeah, I do. Uh, I've had... Many, many, many phone calls from pastors, even some of those who tried to destroy me, to call and apologize. I've had, I've had people to say to me, uh, in, my wife and I at the grocery store, wherever we may be, Bishop, I didn't see it at first. I see it now. There is a, an awakening taking place because the policies aren't working. And the more we hammer that we have a right to live, we have a right to be born. Listen, when you when you represent a community where 70 to 73 percent of the babies are born to single mothers, do we need to throw in the mix same sex marriage? 
to further confuse the people. You know, a lesbian couple and they claim to be married. Two men and they claim to be married. We need to go back to agreeing with the God of the Bible. We need to move to our common sense uh, thinking. And and it is happening because... Or get the, government the out of liberal, marriage. Oh, yeah, all together. And if you get government out, you know what happened? We're back to where we were before. Mm-hmm. You know, HB2 was the... Re- well, let's do this. we got to take a break. Sure. Uh, Bishop, we, we're going to continue our discussion with Bishop Wooden. He's on a roll. I, I, I just enjoy listening to him, so we're going to keep him. We No, no conflict, so... We're going to keep on much to discuss as the ship turns. We're going to talk about Hillary Clinton, Pat McCrory. And we're going to say where this election's going, what he thinks should happen. Stay tuned. All right. I met you. I drink too much, and that's an issue, but I'm okay. When you're looking for a one-of-a-kind website, when you're sick and tired of all the same old boring chatter, check out BobLeeSays.com. No topic is off limits to Bob Lee's smart, funny, irreverent, one-of-a-kind perspective. From sports to politics, from entertainers to newsmakers, from random thoughts to everyday life, Bob Lee finds the humor and a view you will not find anywhere else on the Internet. Go to BobLeeSays.com to sign up for an email alert. You will not want to miss the most recent thoughts that popped into Bob Lee's head. There are hundreds of blogs out there, but there's only a few that really make a difference. In North Carolina, LadyLiberty1885.com makes a difference. If you're looking for a no-nonsense, well-researched blog calling politicians out when they need it, then check out LadyLiberty1885.com. Serving up a blend of snarky conservatism and no-nonsense news since 2009. Live free, period. LadyLiberty1885.com. She does the writing, but you make the difference. Ring Central is the number one cloud business phone system, purpose built for small businesses. A Ring Central virtual business phone system delivers the professionalism and functionality of a Fortune 500 phone service with the flexibility to easily connect teams regardless of location. From toll free numbers to email based fax, Ring Central virtual PBX service gives everything you would expect from a modern, business ready phone system without the complicated setup and other hassles. Ring Central takes business communications to the next level by bringing together advanced messaging, call forwarding, voice, and online fax features. It's the ideal business service for instant on-phone and fax services with 800 numbers or other toll-free number presence. For more information or to get started now, call toll-free 1-855-887-1498. That's 1-855-887-1498. 887-1498. Hi, I'm Eric, a student at Hillsdale College. Here is President of Hillsdale College, Dr. Larry Arn, on natural rights versus entitlements. America was founded on the idea that human beings are born with natural rights, such as the rights to life, liberty, and property. A person who holds this view of rights makes no demands on others except that they respect those rights. Today, however, many Americans talk about rights to a college education, state-of-the-art medical care, and even birth control pills. These are rights understood as entitlements, and a person who holds this view of rights, far from making no demands on other people, is making claims on other people's money and resources. This understanding of rights not only sets citizens against each other, but it undermines the whole idea of natural rights. This Constitution Minute was brought to you by Hillsdale College. To receive a free pocket Constitution and Declaration, go to constitutionminute.com. History was made on today's date. Stay tuned for an American Minute with Bill Federer. On November 3rd, 1924, in a radio address to the nation from the White House, President Calvin Coolidge stated, I urge all voters of our country, without reference to party, that they assemble tomorrow at their respective voting places in the exercise of the high office of American citizenship, that they approach the ballot box in the spirit that they would approach a sacrament. President Coolidge continued, make your choice of public officers solely in the light of your conscience. When an election is so held, it sustains the belief that the voice of the people is the voice of God. This has been an American Minute with Bill Federer. For a free transcript, call American Minute at 1-888-USA-WORD.
Continuing our discussion, we've kept him here four segments now. We're glad to have him. Chief Executive Officer, Pastor, Upper Room, Church of God in Christ in Raleigh, 3,000 members, a proud conservative, also African-American, someone who's unabashedly so, and uh, cl- clarity of conviction and fighting against a tide that, that often has led to people uh, attacking him, attacking him in, right. in, in, in ways that uh, most of us never experience, mainly because of the color of your skin, which is it, it's kind of this racism from you know, African-American community towards you. Yes. I, I had uh, 25 African-American ministers what? to protest me. They called, they called, they did a protest in the NNO and they called a, a, a press conference. And, um, uh, I didn't know about it, but uh, Steve Noble called me and said, would you like to do a show about the, the, the press conference that was held against you? And I said, what press conference? And he told me, I contacted the, uh, the, um, journalist who showed up and I said to her, I said, ma'am, had you told me, I probably would have showed up and protested myself <laughs> and joined the others. Uh, but, uh, the interesting thing is when they protested me, my crime was that I agree with Jesus Christ on the definition of marriage. I, I, my crime was I never changed the set of values and the things that I believed before that was a president Obama. I just didn't change or soften that when he came to power. Let's turn our attention to uh, the current presidential race, okay. the current gubernatorial race here right. in North Carolina. You know, uh, certainly the Clinton campaign now that's been exposed for taking all these groups for granted. Mm-hmm. I noticed one of the Google searches out there, the number one search is how do I change my vote? Uh, especially up in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, where you can do that. Uh, what do you say to the communities that are looking at this presidential race or the gubernatorial race? You've said nice things about the governor. You've said nice things. Uh, you hadn't. We hadn't addressed Trump or Hillary Clinton. Right. Trump certainly has admitted his he is flawed. Right. He says that. I, right. I see Hillary Clinton saying mistake. I don't hear her saying apology. Right. There's a distinction with the difference because the way she chooses words is that way. What do you make of this presidential race? It's an interesting race. Um, uh, number one. We don't have the best two candidates, but we have who we have. At least Trump got to where he is by abiding by the rules as they were laid out. WikiLeaks shows that Clinton cheated. She probably wouldn't have beaten Bernie Sanders had uh, uh, she not been given the answers to questions and, and uh, diff- all of the all of the things that she did to become the party's nominee. Um, the attacks on Trump, the, the the statements that he has made that you can't defend 10 years ago on the bus when he was a Democrat, by the way, uh, thinking that he's having a private conversation. You can't you can't defend that. But the policies that he sets forth, I don't know one policy position that Trump has that I disagree with. I actually believe that we need strong border uh, 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 strong Security. borders. Yes, uh, you can't. I, I agree that you can't have a country without borders. Uh, for, for people to say that the border argument is, is crazy, well, the whole book of Nehemiah is about the wall. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he built the walls, rebuilt the walls around Jerusalem, right. and uh, the Vatican. You know, the Pope kind of criticized uh, Trump's wall position, they have a wall. but they have walls, and and there's nothing xenophobic about wanting to control your borders. Go to the Mexican border, and the border between Mexico and El Salvador, and see their border uh, uh, control policies, border patrol policies. And so what, what, what should we do? Just allow people to just enter into the country? Plus, there's a little, not racism, but uh, racist, but there is a racist tone to this because as a African American, I know that Open borders do not benefit black people. As you bring in these people, as you bring them in, you see jobs heretofore where you used to see African-Americans on construction sites, working on roads and places like that. These are honorable jobs that pay good money. You don't see us now. And uh, some say, well, we move beyond that. Well, apparently not. When you look at the unemployment rolls and and you look at uh, the jobless rate, we're still disproportionately affected. So if we're being disproportionately affected by uh, the influx of immigrants, illegal immigrants, why would we support a candidate who is for increasing uh, illegal immigrants? And and, and, uh, Hillary's position on the Syrian refugees want to increase that 550 percent. 
You're going to bring them into the country. And there's a mad rush on the border right now because they are oh, concerned yeah. Trump might win. So yeah. there's a mad rush because they – I mean, that says a lot there. Now, what do you – now, let's turn our attention to the state of North Carolina. You've said nice things about yeah. the governor. Uh, I think there's a strong economic argument to be made, lower right. taxes, more right. freedom, more opportunity, right. uh, reg reform, things that I help mm-hmm. – I, I, I didn't see the tax reform go on the basis of someone's skin color. I saw tax reform on the basis of incomes right. and what people earn right. and can keep and do and, and provide for their families. So what do you say to this? Because House Bill 2 certainly has clouded this. Roy Cooper, every other word out of his mouth seems to be HB2. What do you make of this governor's race a verb, for the African-American A verb community? and a noun in HB2. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> hb 2 so. I First of all, I, I, I have a gus respect for the governor for standing his ground on HB2. When the Human Rights Commission... Uh, when they go and pressure businesses to leave the state or to step out temporarily, because North Carolina remains in the top five places right. to do business, but for the ACC and others to fold, the NBA to just be cowardice, and to, you know, you, you still have your team in, in Charlotte. You know, if you really want to make a statement, move, move the team, leave. Yeah. just leave. But for but to leave North Carolina, you leave North Carolina at your own peril. This is a great state. And it's a great state to do business in, and it's constantly getting better. But I appreciate the governor and the legislators standing their ground on this issue because here's what they did. They put the safety of our women and children ahead of money. For that, he will always have But yet respect. it's all about greed. I thought the, yeah. the liberals say it's all about greed for it. It's right. greed, greed, greed. And yet on the same time they're saying, well, Republicans are greedy. They want to do it, help the rich. Right. But then they have this bill, and they say, oh, no, they're against uh, the economy against people. And exactly. I, you can't have it both ways. Well, that's what they want to do. They want to have it both ways. And when they have a media such as uh, 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 the News and Observer, who overwhelmingly supported uh, uh, the, the, the coverage was overwhelmingly negative about HB2, you would think that the majority of North Carolinians oppose HB2. You would think that maj- the majority of Charlotteans oppose what took place back in February. Well, don't do it. Charlotte said that, that 70% of Charlotteans said, we don't want this law. And they voted it in anyway, anyway. You know? So, so much for politicians listening to their parishioners and, and the people whom they're supposed right. to uh, represent. I'm grateful for the governor standing his ground on this. I hope that people turn out and and support him. I I I, I see what he's doing to for the victims of Matthew. I'm appreciative that the governor it's you know time that he could be spending toward campaigning, raising money and all this. The governor is is looking out for those who have been disproportionately affected by this storm. Uh, Matthew, everybody thought Matthew was going to turn right. Matthew turned left. And it's been it's been a challenge. Our church has sent thousands of dollars. Last 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, anything you'd like to say? I want to say to the people, vote your convictions. And and look at the the politicians and look at their policies. Not who you like the most, not whose rhetoric offends you or make you feel good, but Pay attention to their policies. I believe in the presidential election, in terms of policies, I think Donald Trump overwhelmingly have the greatest policies. Governor, gubernatorial, Pat McCrory, one hundred percent. Reverend Wooden, thanks for being a part of the show, Pastor Bishop. Thanks, thanks for having me. <laughs> much to go. Second hour getting ready to be underway. Stay tuned.